who is associate professor from uh, uh, the state university of uh, new jersey uh, i think we must be very thankful to our uh, dr hemant sir for readily accepting for our invitation uh, when we were there at uh, uh, national uh, conference at uh, jaipur along with our honorable vice chancellor uh, with our request he has readily accepted to be the guest speaker for today's program uh, before uh, uh, i request the speaker i'll just uh, quickly go through his uh, bio data uh, dr uh, uh, hemant sir uh, after completing his uh, bs agriculture from gurujat agriculture university anand uh, he came to esa in the year 1999 for his degree graduate degree program in plant physiology department from uh, uh, texas university in the year 2002 then he went to the university of florida uh, for completing his phd in the department of agriculture and uh, biological sciences uh, then dr uh, gohil went to california state university yes, for, for the post doctoral uh, degree in viticulture uh, researching on the effects of temperature and plant growth regulators on anthocyanins phenolics and tannins in uh, wine grapes and in the year 2013 he joined Wa washington state university as the technology transfer specialist uh, in the viticulture uh, division and uh, entomology department also in 2015 he joined uh, rootgers the state university of new jersey as an assistant professor in the department of agriculture and natural resources he is also an extension agent Uh, a rank equivalent to associate professor uh, his main focus areas are wine grapes and uh, tree fruit crops so uh, with this brief introduction uh, may now request uh, dr hemant gohil sir to kindly uh, go ahead with your uh, uh, presentation i request sir uh, dr gohil sir all right uh, thank you very much uh, dr srinivasalu uh appreciate uh, your kind words and uh, introduction uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, you know honorable vice chancellor dr janki ram for inviting me uh, to speak at this global connect program uh, i had a very good conversation with him uh, at a horticulture conference in jaipur uh, just last month and uh, i learned about his uh, <clears throat> initiatives uh, uh you know on uh, the global connect program i think it is pretty in, uh, interesting uh, program uh and it it can benefit not only the institute but also uh, the state uh, at large uh i know uh, i just found out that andhra pradesh is number 1 in total fruit production in india and it's a it it needs really uh you know a a, a program and leadership uh, to Uh, help the industry <clears throat> fruit industry and agriculture in general so a uh, little mm -hmm. bit about myself you know the sound better adla hemant uh so uh, i'm a county extension agent okay uh, that's my role and it's because our office are located in a county uh, government buildings okay so it's a equivalent of district what we call in india district they call county okay so each county has extension agent uh, and we have specific responsibilities i have wine grapes and tree fruits okay and uh, our department falls under larger umbrella of uh, rutgers university cooperative extension that means there is a robust collaboration and cooperation amongst uh, various academic Uh, an administrative uh, department, not at the university, not just the university, but also at the you know, state government level, uh, at the legislative level, uh, and uh, and also community organization. So uh, this position is public facing uh, position, and uh, and in my presentation, uh, delayed harvest. Uh, Uh, and cold storage performance of uh, gloria peaches with the stony heart genetics uh, it will cover little bit of uh, you know um, uh, variety development through breeding uh, applied research in post harvest uh, handling and 
also extension okay so this is this will be an example of uh, problem solving through research based uh, extension so let me start uh, share my presentation all right uh, is it is it there can you see whole slide please ah yes sir it's uh, fine okay good. All right, so uh, peaches are an uh, important fruit crop for New Jersey, okay? Uh, New Jersey ranks fourth uh, nationally for total peach production in United States after California, South Carolina, and, and Georgia. Uh, in a year when we have a frost events, like, you know, when the southern peaches gas, uh, you know, the crop gets damaged uh new jersey becomes the second largest producer uh in the u.s okay and uh i mean the total uh value of the production is 30 to 35 million dollar it's not a lot i mean compared to let's say nursery industry however peach uh has a you know it's a state fruit, you can say. You know, people long for summer peaches, just like uh, you know, uh, like you wait for uh, you know, begumpalli uh, mangoes in in Andhra Pradesh. It's like the variety you love your uh, mangoes. Like we all love mangoes. So just like that, like peaches is something that you know people uh, want to eat. And it's also high value crop. So the peaches are under specialty crop uh, division. Okay, so all these high value uh, crops, about like five thousand six hundred something dollars per acre, um, which is very good actually. So most of the peaches produced in New Jersey are sold to fresh market. What what does that mean? Is it's not going to processing the 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 cheap quality. I mean. Uh, average quality fruits generally goes for the processing for juice you know uh, peach puree and, and all that but new jersey's most of the fruits almost 100 percent are sold through the fresh fresh market like large horse uh, wholesalers uh, large retail uh, operations you pick uh, community farmers market uh, county farmers markets and all that and our New Jersey peaches are uh, sold uh, not only in Eastern United States, but all the way up to uh, Eastern Canada. So New Jersey, if you look at the geography, I mean, I'm sorry, I should have that map. It's like the east, northeast of uh, United States. So uh, Rutgers University's uh, fruit breeding program that includes peach, actually, peach breeding is it's it's very old. I mean, the they started uh, it in 1907, and that tells you the importance of peaches as a you know uh, important crop for New Jersey. Just like uh, you know uh, all other crops, you know peaches have their own challenges, right? Uh, high cost of production because of the cost of fertilizers, pesticides. And labor, it always keeps go uh, goes up, 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 right? It's even true in India, for, you know. Uh, but that means lower profit, and I have marked it in red because I was not taught in my undergrads, masters, or even PhD that farmers have to make money. And remember that, like you know, everything we do. Uh, is to help farmers make money, like, you know, in a, in a sustainable way, but that's our main objective, okay, to help them. Uh, there are other challenges, like the peaches from other regions, as I just mentioned. They flood our market during summer, right when our peaches are coming in summer, and then their season in, like, so Georgia, uh, South Carolina is ending, and then they just flood our market. So that depresses the price. Uh, we can do a little bit about it and I'll, I'll i'll mention my next few slides but the other problem is you know this is frequent frost events now when i say frequent doesn't mean like every other week frequent means every other years but it used to be once in a 10 years event where like you know 
you have right in the middle of bloom there is a low temperature in the early morning you know and then if you have freezing and that causes the uh, you know uh, dead flowers and then you don't have a crop so for example i mean you know uh, i think february uh, is, is 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 a month where you know this progression from dormant to swollen birds and all the way to the pink bloom a first bloom and then full bloom happens by the end of i think mid april in some year it's like by march it will be over but when these flowers are open they are vulnerable okay and because the what happens is when you have frost event you have this freezing of ice i mean water molecule or moistures uh, in and around the pistil and ovaries uh, suck out the moisture from these tissues and it results in dehydration. So you come next morning, like, you know, in the evening, it's all bloom, perfect flowers. And then the morning you come and you'll see this brown tissues, like by the 10 o'clock, you can even assess the damage sometimes. So these are the photos, like, you know, uh, can you see my arrows here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the the photo in the middle, this open flower, it says all browning. On the, the you see the pistil is all uh, getting brown versus this un, un, undamaged flower with the green pistil. So you know you open the flowers and you find out and get an idea of the, of the damage. And I mean, it's not like, you know, when we have a cold event, like, you know, entire states or regions, uh, crop can be lost. Okay. And you see the high you know, uh, news headlines like this, you know, like, okay, here, like complete uh, crop was decimated. I think that was 2016. Um, it's, it's a problem. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, why Gloria? Okay. So Gloria is a novel peach, which was developed by uh, a Rutgers University uh, breeding program in 2011. Uh, so it has all the qualities of very good peach that, you know, that we we want, like yellow, uh, flashed, free stone, melting texture. So it's a melting texture. It's like mango or, you know, a ripened mango. And... Uh, the taste is slightly tangy, so like you know, sweet and slightly acidic, uh, just like orange. So mm -hmm. it's 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 amazing. I you know really like uh, peaches. So the, the the fruit, if you look look at the skin, it's like almost eighty to ninety percent scarlet red with the golden yellow background color. Sometimes it is complete scarlet. You know, it's outstanding. It's very sweet. It's a high yielding variety, uh, disease resistant, and it is also good for uh, processing. Okay, now on the top of it, it has a late blooming and extended bloom, so it has a greater chances of escaping that frost event because the frost generally happens, you know, um, March end of March and sometimes like, you know, during the first weeks of April. And, you know, if, if the fro uh, blooming is delayed, the window of frost damage, you know, uh, is escaped. So, and on the top of it, you know, the bloom is de extended. So in general, like when the peach flower blossom, within three days, it's like all open. But two to three days, sometimes it's four days. Uh, depending on the cold uh, temperature. But Gloria, I mean, it can bloom all the way up to like two weeks. So like even if there is a frost on particular like you know, day, uh, there is always some per percentage of fruit or oh, sorry, flowers that are unopened. Okay. So, uh, and that is because it has a, you know, what we call stony hard genetics. You know, uh, we don't know particular genes. It has not been sequenced, but we know uh, one of the parents has a stony hard uh, genetics. 
And that means it has a slow ethylene release. And we all know ethylene is a culprit for you know, senescence, uh, enhanced ripening, um, and then all that. But that also helps the fruit, actually. When it is ripening, uh, it hangs longer. Peaches, it's a soft fruit. Uh, actually, I never had when I was in India, but it's called aru in India. It's in like uh, mostly northern uh, India, like Uttarakhand and uh, uh, Himachal. But now they are also, I think, growing in Punjab. But anyways, you know, it's a soft fruit. It, it, it has to be picked uh, within a window of like three, four days. But you can let it hang longer. That means in a year when we have like, you know, uh, too much peaches from other regions, farmer can extend their window of, uh, on the tree uh, or say harvest window as we call, and then also in storage, okay? Uh, so it, it gives them a greater marketing uh, ability or marketing window. And also greater firmness means, uh, you know, uh, less chances of uh, damage, bruises during the post-harvest, like handling, uh, transportation, storage, packing. So, you know, Gloria is the savior, uh, I would say. Now, just, I mean, this is a pedigree of uh, uh, Gloria, the uh, peach, uh, the breeder uh, sent me, and uh, it has the main characteristic of uh, Encore, okay? Uh, and it ripens in that window. So that's the one parent. Uh, and Anchor also has a like, you know, relatively firm flesh uh, uh, texture. But then other parent, 7 28, 28, perhaps carries that uh, stony hard uh, dominant uh, lee. And, and if you look at the jump plasm here, it's all over from the world, like from Japan, uh, Central Asia, uh, China. So uh, that's one thing. Like you know, if you want uh, a breeding, uh, uh, you know, you have want you have you want to be ready for any kind of uh, you know environmental stress, like you know a trait that that you know you have never thought, and then you you need it. So uh, our our germ plasm collection is uh, extensive actually. So. Uh, so last year, uh, I measured the bloom percentage, basically, you know, the opening of flowers, open flowers uh, for like about like we have 30 something varieties. So this is just like few of them on one screen. Uh, but if you look at, at uh, Gloria on April uh, 3rd, 0% flowers were open. So they were still either tight birds or, or uh, swollen. I mean, I think it's mostly swollen birds or in a pink stage but like let's say Messina, uh, Desiree, they're already 100% open. They're like sitting duck. If slight temperature dip and we lose flowers. I mean, I haven't seen only last year in once in like six years of evaluation, I have seen, uh, you know, even a light crop in on Desiree. So that's one thing. And then, uh, like, you know, uh, April 14th, Gloria is only like 60 or 50% bloom, okay? Compared to, look at all the other varieties. They are like full bloom. So they are like, you know, vulnerable. There are newer varieties like Evelyn, Tiana, Selena, Brigantine. You see they <clears throat> they also have low uh, blooming percentage, but then like you see like how fast, they don't have extended bloom like Gloria. So, uh, it's it's uh, it's amazing, but then not everything is great, right? I mean, not you don't get everything. One fine day, we got a call from uh, Luis Di Eugenio. He's a grower. He has three hundred acres of peaches, and he said that you know the we they are getting uh, complaints from the growers, sorry consumers, about this you know tissue brownings and this this climy exudates around the pit now this you know this combination i mean browning is common you know uh most of the time it happens because of the chilling injuries during the storage 
but this came from consumer so we don't know when it happened whether it happened on trip or storage and i mean ideally what you want is like you know clean uh area around the pit okay you never see i mean it's a firm it's like apple i mean you use a firm fleshed uh clean uh fruit uh, so of course, I mean, uh, the, it's, it has softened. That's not the problem, but this, uh, this trait. So what you do? I mean, you know. Uh, so I organized a stakeholder meeting, okay, uh, because you cannot ignore like you know this. Even though you know he was the only one who complained about that issue, and they're like, oh, it's a new variety, and uh, we don't know uh, how to ma manage it. Um, and uh, so we, you know organize this small roundtable meeting um, where, uh, so we want to know what are the actually problems. And then we also discussed other marketing related problems. So I invited Dan Ward. He's a, you know, uh, he's a pomologist, uh, Joseph Gofreda. He's a breeder who developed uh, this variety and you know, he should know what are the problems coming from the consumers. Luis Junior, you know, large scale growers, Francisco Orlande. So he is the owner of a giant packing house. Uh, it's, I think one of the largest fruit packing uh, facility in entire Northeast. And they pack all the New Jersey, not almost of New Jersey peaches. So we, we invited him uh, and then the other growers. Like, you know, they are like really uh, 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 growers that um, should be kept into the loop for anything that goes. Um, so after that discussion, we found out that, you know, the growers want to know, like, you know, how late is too late to harvest Gloria peaches? Because their biggest concern was, you know, this, this problems associated with the uh, longer, like delayed uh, harvest. And it's tempting because the fruit keeps getting bigger. Um, so uh, other thing is, what are the symptoms associated with the uh, harvest delays and storage or, or both? And most importantly, what is the best indicator or, or indicators for harvesting gloria, like softness uh, or color or size of the fruit? Okay, uh, because traditionally, you know, just like we go to the market, right? And we touch the fruit and get the fill. Uh, Sometimes we like Indians are we are brutal with the pindis like you know we try to uh, break the end and then it's not good so I like pindis <laughs> uh, but that's a, like that first touch we know so even the pickers when they go to the field they touch and they get an idea if they are ready to pick so before we design a an you know, experiment to simulate the problem you have to consider few things that you know Gloria. You know, uh, it ripens quickly and non-uniformly on the tree. And, uh, you know, you have to optimize harvest, okay? Because if it is too ripe, too soft, it's, you know, it's bigger. But grade A, that's good. But then by the time it goes to the market, it becomes grade C. And the pricing, oh, the middleman, like, you know, they will just call you and tell you that, okay, the, you'll get half the price. It's brutal. It's not only in India, like even here, this is how uh, the market works, um, unfortunately. And, and if, if you're a student, like, you know, you should go out to the markets, like not only nearby, like go to Vijaywara, Calcutta, Chennai, Bangalore, get an idea. If you go travel, like, you know, different places and then get an idea, talk to farmers, get a feel. Um, and the thing is, peach also lose quality, like the acidity, like the tanginess, right? The, that uh, rapidly during the storage. Uh, on and yeah, the the ethylene blockers and SEC inhibitors. So SEC is a precursor to ethylene in a biosynthetic pathway, and you know that ethylene is involved in all the senescence and ripening and all that. So there are blockers in the market, uh, one MCP and AVG. But those don't work on peaches because peaches have multiple receptor, okay, different types of receptors. Makes it difficult 
Um, so pitches are really difficult um, in that sense. So, so for our experiment to simulate the problem, right? Uh, expecting that maybe harvest delays, storage delays may, you know, give us that uh, problem. So uh, we did like one year intensive study where we harvested samples, food samples from, uh, you know, uh, commercially, I mean, uh, well-established peach orchards. Like, so they are like not four or five year olds, like 10, 12 year old peach trees from two farms, Circle M and Summit City Farms. Uh, they are good collaborators, by the way. And then I do actually the or variety evaluations on uh, South Jersey on these farms. So we harvested uh, fruits uh, when they were ready to pick, commercially ready to pick. That means the fruit is big enough, the background color is getting yellowish, from greenish to yellowish. Okay, so it's a approx approximation, but that's what uh, we used. So zero days, three days, seven days, 10 days, and 16 days after the fruits were ready uh, to pick, okay? So it's a harvest delay. That's one treatment. And then uh, at each harvest, we harvested 100 uh, fruits and then divided into group of five and then place them into the cold storage and then let it sit in the cold storage for 1, 7, 14, 21, 28 days. So like, you know, those five batches of 20 fruits will bring one uh, batch after one, seven, 14, 21, and 20 days, eight days. So that, that, that's a quite a large uh, window, actually. So uh, again, like, you know, so the, the peaches don't ripen uniformly. So we, we made sure, we means me and then our graduate students and made sure that all the peaches are at the same stage. Like just ten to twenty percent of a uh, you know background color, uh, but towards the yellowish side. Okay, so five hundred peaches were marked at both the sides. So this is uh, just the you know outline what I just mentioned. Okay, um, harvest delays of zero, three, seven, ten, and sixteen days, and for each harvest delays we had days in storage one, seven, fourteen, twenty one, and twenty eight. And, and and then we would pick food from uh, both the farms. Okay, so me, uh, so we measured uh, background color using colorimeter. So the first uh, instrument you see is a colorimeter. It measured the background color. Then we measured the firmness. The second instrument you see here is a penetrometer. It measures the firmness uh, of the flesh. Okay. Uh, and it is measured in uh, pounds of uh, pressure. And then after that, we squeezed the juice. Although we also measured like, you know, physical para parameters like the uh, diameter of the fruit, weight and all that. And after that, we did this, okay? Uh, and then we crushed the juice uh, and then we measured the total soluble solids. That's uh, sugar that indicates sweetness. It's measured in bricks. And then titrable, total titrable acidity. Okay, just that. So let's uh, jump on to the uh, results. So uh, diameter increased as we delayed harvest. Okay, from uh, like uh, 2.8 something to 3.1 inch. Uh, that's good. But in market, like, you know, anything about 2.7 uh, inch of a diameter to, is grade A. Uh, even it is about 3 inch, it's grade A large fruit. <clears throat> but it's good. Okay. Now, total soluble solids, uh, that sugar, uh, increased as we delayed harvest. Okay, and and it's it's understandable. Like you know, you, you know, uh, delay harvest. The photosynthesis is going on. It's summer, so it will accumulate sugar. Uh, however, it's increased from like about eleven point five to twelve point five. 
Now in peach is any time like you know the the bricks is about ten. It's considered like sweet peach. About uh, about eleven is considered uh <clears throat> you know very sweet. Um, Twelve, thirteen, it's exceptionally uh sweet, sweet. <clears throat> right? Uh, but what happens in the cold storage? Okay. Well, during the cold storage, the total soluble solid slightly increase. It's not much. Now, okay. Now, one thing why we don't have the uh, <clears throat> the ladder of significance, right? When you have significance difference. Well, this pre presentation was for growers. Uh, we have a grower conference, and I'll show you later um, what it is. Uh, but you want to keep it simple uh, for them, you know, and then they will make a note and then it's not as written in stone. It can change these levels. Uh, but the fact is uh, the sugar concentration uh, increased. But remember, it's that is because the, the, the fruit weight loss, okay? The, the content did not increase. The concentration slightly increased because uh, you know, it's a high humidity during the storage that happens, and for that reason, you see this. Okay. So, what about the background color? Well, as we delayed harvest, you can see. So, background color is uh, reported as a hue angle. So, you see this the hue chart, right? Uh, it's from zero to one eighty degree. Uh, it's like opposite direction of what we generally have seen those. Uh, hue, I mean the the angles. So it's easy representation of the color coding, right? So you see here uh, around like you know uh, so this is ninety degree, right? Uh, and this is under ninety. So uh, when we picked at the earliest commercial maturity, uh, you know, for zero days after that, like on on the day one. Uh, you can see that it's a yellow green background color, but then it goes down uh, as we delayed up to 16 days, as we hang, let it hang more, it's more yellow. So that helps. However, total titrate of table acidity declined rapidly. So the first thing, uh, so your different colored lines are basically harvest delay okay and uh, all the treatment decline and it's common in peaches it happens i mentioned earlier right that that's a it's a problem uh the acidity declines okay now the american consumers they like tangy uh peaches tangy most of their fruit they like tanginess because they don't have like you know a subtropical I mean, they do uh, in Florida, California, that's true. But mostly their preference is tangy fruit. Uh, and then, so that's why like, you know, only up to like, you know, uh, uh, a week or two weeks, you can see uh, the acidity level is kind of acceptable and then it declines. Now, what about the storage uh, delay in, in the storage? I mean, it did not give us any specific patterns, you see, the, the colored lines are like up and down. The green is up and down. You cannot uh, give any conclusion about it. And it's normal because the acidity is very sensitive. I mean, you know, depending on how the fruit was exposed under light and all that, that makes a huge difference uh, in measurement. So, uh, but this is an important uh, uh, re uh, result. Now, uh, I think the most important for growers is the firmness. And one thing I'm, I forgot to mention that most of the growers are large scale growers. Man. Okay. Uh, we have one grower who has 900 acres of peaches. They do whole sellings. They are dependent on storage. Okay. Uh, there are growers, they do retail small farm stands and all that. For them, it may not matter much, but for like, you know, about like, Four to four forty five hundred acres of peaches get uh, goes to uh, the storage facilities and gets back processed and all that. So 
the firmness in, is important. Now, what are these numbers means? Okay. Well, these numbers means uh, so we know that whenever the firmness is measured between two to three pounds per square inch, it's considered ready to eat. It's soft enough. Uh, between six to eight pounds is ready to display. I mean, that means you can come out from the storage and you can display. 10 to 16 pounds is ready to pick. It's basically, that's what uh, you should pick when you, that's a good firmness uh, to pick the fruit. Okay. So what we did was, okay, we wanted a, a standard. So we chose seven pounds. Above seven pounds is a good firmness for storage. And below that is like, you know, uh, not good for display. I mean, you cannot, it's not written in stone, but for our practical purpose, we took seven pounds. Um, and, uh, the, and then it gives some clear results. So like, you know, these colored lines, Okay, there's a, those are the harvest delays. And you can see the main treatment effect, right? It's a main effect as a, uh, as you delay harvest, definitely the firmness goes down from day one, okay, in the storage and all the way. And then also there is a, a you know, um, there's the second effect, like, you know, this days in storage uh, for <clears throat> most of the, uh, this uh, treatment or uh, harvest delay treatment, you see that fruit is able to maintain firmness. It's not rapidly declining, uh, you know, uh, at least for like 15 to 20 days. Uh, so considering the fact that maintaining the seven pounds of firmness and 20 up to 20 days into cold storage, gives you like, you know, about like 20 or something days of a window where you can sell your peaches, okay? So, so this is a fancy version of the same uh, data, okay? Where we put this uh, days of harvest delay, days in the storage, uh, and then uh, pounds of firmness, uh, the y-axis and all these green dots are the firmness above seven pounds and uh, all the yellow dots are uh, under seven pounds and you can see there is a treatment effect interaction you can see slight bump uh, but overall uh, so I mean this is for the kind of publication uh, <clears throat> so we had some idea about you know how long to store and all that uh, but the main question still remain, like what happened to browning? We did not see any browning for any treatment. We sliced open all the fruits. And the this, this browning you see on the two cheeks of the fruit, that's uh, from the penetrometer, okay? And the tissues are readily oxidized and, and it's that, it's not the browning. Uh, <clears throat> peaches were mostly clean. Uh, out of 1,000 fruits we, we, we had sliced, um, only two to three had that kind of symptoms that, you know, uh, the grower, uh, grower uh, showed us, which is pretty insignificant. Uh, we think <clears throat> that could be localized, you know, a tree was stressed for some reason, uh, irrigation or was like the, the drip irrigation, emitter was blocked, something like that. Uh, we don't know, uh, but this can happen. So, our recommendation. Gloria can hang on tree for, you know, five to seven days after they reach commercial maturity. Don't let it hang uh, more than that. If you hang it more than seven days, uh, then it reduces their storage life significantly, okay? And it is not recommended. Uh, I mean, if you, you can still let it hang, if you have a market, like fresh market, you know, consumers, customers are coming in a you pick operation, they pick and then you, they pay. Uh, <clears throat> so 
but th th there are other minor recommendations that, like, that, that clarify the confusion about Gloria peaches that, you know, it, it often develops good color and size before it is ready to pick. Okay, so you cannot basically go by uh, softness. That's one thing because it doesn't soften like other peaches. Uh, you know, so ideally we, we suggest, we recommend that, you know, when you see the yellow coloring and the minimum size of two to three quarter, two, in, two and three uh, quarter inch is a good indicator to start picking if you want to. Okay, and then you can delay up to five to seven days, but that's a good uh, start. Uh, but the most importantly, Gloria has to be marketed as a neat peach. Okay, because uh, sometimes customers just did not like because they like that juice that squirts when they eat what they call like the leaner and meaner. Like, you no, know, they you should eat the pe uh, peaches like this, like, you no, know, leaning because. It's, you know, squirts juices, they like it. Um, but Gloria is not like that. It will disappoint those traditional consumer. Uh, so that was our strong recommendation that it has to be marketed as neat peach. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in extension, outcome and impact are very important. So we have the recommendation, we did a trial. Now it has to be communicated to the larger audience uh, in the language that they can understand, okay, in a simplified language. So there are also, you know, uh, I spoke at those regional meetings and you know, in New Jersey as well. For example, uh, Mid-Atlantic Fruit Vegetable <laughs> Convention can easily get like 2,500 growers. Now, of course, there are concurrent sessions on like greenhouse, apples, peaches, cherries, uh, tomatoes, and all that. So there are sessions going on, agriculture marketing, agriculture tourism. But then like, you know, all the peach growers will come like uh, in the region, uh, they'll come to meet. Then another Michigan has a large meeting. So we spoke at all these meetings, okay? And then I'll get the call, uh, some media people will be there. They would want to do an article in a trade magazine. There are fruit specific trade magazines, a newsletter, um, and of course in a scientific conference. And in scientific conference, when I present my recommendation is like, don't use the word stony hard genetics, use care growers, okay? Uh, so, I mean, uh, just to give you an example, I'm sorry, I'm running uh, just, I think, uh, uh, about my time limit, I guess. Uh, but this is important. Like in, we have this newsletter or like live blog. Uh, so in extension, you have to provide you information well in advance as much, as, uh, you know, um, uh, the timing is important. The information has to be timely so that growers are on the top of the situation. Uh, even your IPM, right? Like exclusion, avoidance, and all that. Like, so growers have to be warned. So we have this, uh, and that's, so these newsletters are not weekly or monthly. They are like, whenever extension agent, extension uh, personnel, like, you know, we write an article, it gets public next day, next morning, okay? And uh, the grower have this information. So I think it's a good uh, idea to have like, you know, this live, uh, blog or newsletter uh, thing. Uh, so, uh, you know, group fruit growers is another like, you know, most popular uh, trade magazine, which has like 24,000 print circulation and it's the online uh, subscribers as well. Uh, then there's a good fruit grower, which is an international fruit magazine. Uh, it's very popular. Uh, and uh, now we like, you know, you see the title here, no nap is needed with neat peaches. So now not only we are talking about all the results, uh, recommendations, but also this marketing aspect. So uh, I mean, that, that, that work was done in 16, 2016 and 17, but we still get a call. Like, you no, know, I got a call from Dr. Bill Shane 
uh, from Michigan State University last uh, August. And uh, it's the same question. So now he's asking us that uh, they are seeing this problem in Michigan, uh, but we have a you know answer, we have a recommendation. So uh, that's what <clears throat> is a, a research-based exemption uh, does. So uh, that's all. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Daniel Ward. Uh, he's uh, my colleague. Uh, he's, he's, he's a specialist in pomology. So he looks into, uh, you know, uh, horticultural aspects on, in fruits, tree fruits. Uh, I'd like to thank our grow, grower collaborators. Uh, there are, uh, we have trials uh, on their farms, like when the entomologists have their farms, uh, experiments. Pathologists have their experiments and all that. Uh, of course, the students and uh, technicians uh, for all their help during the research, and um, you know all the support from our egg, egg experiment station and uh, uh, New Jersey Peach Promotion Council. They are the one who funded our research and this Peach Promotion Council. Now, who was the president of Peach Promotion New Jersey Peach Promotion Council? Well, Mr. Santo Mascheron. So, you know, they get the feedback and uh, <clears throat> uh, they fund you because all this, like part of the tax money that get, uh, you know, comes to the commodity organizations so like Peach Promotion Council, Apple Promotion Council. They're like all kind of uh, commodity specific uh, council. So growers are self-organized. Uh, and I hear that now in India also there are like cooperatives that are coming up, grower cooperatives. So that's good news. Uh, <clears throat> we need more and more of that. But here is like there is this active interaction. Okay. So um, that's all I have. And uh, this is uh, Gloria. Thank you uh, very much, everyone, for listening. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, I'm here. Okay, thank you, Professor Hemant. This side, Balraj Singh. Hey, hello, sir. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> well, uh, yes, yes, I'm very good. I so did not see you before. We have students from Masters and PhD in this yes, yes. Uh, meeting hall. And it was very informative on a particular crop, which is very important for the U.S. And we are also growing. You did mention about the crop, peach. Uh -huh. uh, we, we are facing problem in terms of uh, the fruit fly when it is on maturity. Oh. This is the basic problem. We also grew at IRI New Delhi. The crop was excellent and we harvested very good harvest. But the only yeah. problem we are facing at you mentioned that ethylene is the major culprit for the mm -hmm. peaches. And uh, same time, the, the, the fruit fly is again the major problem in India. Yeah. We have varieties like uh, Shane Punjab, uh, Sharbati, Florida Prince. Uh -huh. Little bit we are growing, but uh, the Shane Punjab and uh, Sharbati are the major varieties which are being grown in uh, mm. the hills or also in yeah. the plains. But the crop is excellent, but the only problem, the self life and the storage. Again, the ethylene is the culprit, and also same time, we are facing the problem of this, uh, the fruit fly. But I heard that in US, uh, there are problems uh, in terms of bacterial diseases, and also bacterial spot is a big problem. Yes, this is a big problem. So then, other fungal problems are also there. But your variety, I think, can help up to a great extent to the farming community, not only in yes. US. But maybe it can be helpful to Indian conditions. Okay. Oh, the first thing, uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Singh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, and speak at the jo uh, uh, you know, Jaipur conference. Uh, okay. I gave a talk on the same topic. So that was like net practice for me. 
and probably it helped me uh, uh, today. Uh, but coming back to fruit fly, so we don't, for some reason, we don't have that fruit fly problem in uh, New Jersey. And I haven't heard that in Michigan because uh, we would see the uh, research. Uh, but I think we get the problem of uh, brown marmorated stink bug, big problem uh, as far as insects and uh, brown rot. That's a fungal uh, problem. But I think the variety development uh, can really help. Uh, so we had that speaker from Iran, right? And he talked about all these genotypes from Iran. And I'm wondering, I think, if, if we can ask him for these genotypes, uh, for this you know, uh, hard genetics, perhaps that can help. Uh, you uh, during the conference, our conference at Jaipur, there yes. was a presentation from Iran, and yes. Iran has the highest variability available in heli track for Iran. That is the added advantage. They have have huge germplasm or variability available in Iran. Yes, yes, I think we yeah you can like get the germplasm. Not have that much of variability available. Yes, 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 and. Uh... You know, I can uh, talk with our breeder here if, like, you know, this uh, this material, if Gloria, can be made available uh, in India. Uh, if, I, if I can be of any help, I'll be more than happy. Pretty much, uh, Professor uh, Hemant, uh, for making a very nice presentation. And any student, any question from this side? And also, I think, uh, Articles University, Andhra Pradesh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, uh, Dr. Janki Ram, I think is also available, maybe, or his staff or dean, director, and students are online. And he sent me the link. I was not knowing. Yesterday, Dr. Janki Ram sent me the link that he has invited you to make a presentation on this very important uh, crop of U.S. So, yes, yes. Right sir, at Zaipur, he invited Sir, namaste, sir. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor from SKNAU Zerbner, sir. Uh, due to some net problem, we could not see you immediately, sir. After that, we could see your uh, 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 this thing, sir, uh, uh, yeah. video, sir. Uh, really very nice, sir. And uh, we welcome you all to this. Uh, it's my pleasure to mention here the faculty member students, along with the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Sri Karan Narendra Agriculture Institute, Jobner Jaipur, have also joined this program. It's really our pleasure, sir, to welcome you all to the program. I'm really happy, sir. Sir, good morning, sir. Uh, Dr. Balajal. Sir, good, good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, I'm uh, Srinivasan Registrar from Dr. Vaisal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we are very much thankful to you, sir, on behalf of Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Vaisal Articulture University, for being with us for this uh, 18th uh, Global Connect Series program. I think your presence and your staff presence made this program, um, I mean, uh, much. Um, I mean, uh, uh, added, um, I mean, strength to this program, uh, and it was very a uh, successful program in our view. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for joining this program. Thank you very much. And the uh, uh, honorable vice chancellor is there, Dr. Janki Ram, or he's not there? Yes, sir. He just arrived from Delhi. Okay. Uh, I think uh, yes, yes. And uh, maybe the students from your campus are also they have joined. Yes, yes, sir. So they should ask questions. Yes, yes. Our uh, staff, all the associate deans and uh, faculty, students are also there in this program. So, I think uh, some of our students may ask their uh, queries to clarify their doubts. Yes. Even faculty also. Uh, sir, good morning, sir. Uh, this is Dr. K. Dhanujayara, uh, head uh, HRS DLC. Sir, congratulations uh, to Dr. Hemant Kumar for the excellent presentation. And uh, you. and uh, you have given a solution for the control of uh, this uh, uh, browning and uh, exodus in uh, Gloria variety of weeds. And uh, we have uh, learned many things uh, from your presentation. And excellent, sir, excellent. And uh, uh, congratulations for solving the problem of browning in weeds, Gloria variety to the farming community of this. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I just want to say one thing to the students because, you know, uh, any student uh, with questions from this side or uh, from uh, Andhra Pradesh? I think I, I have made one. everything clear then, right? Sir, I have one. Yeah, one it was clear. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Clear. Regarding uh, the anthocyanin uh, uh, pigments, sir. Uh, yeah. I think uh, uh, they are all water soluble pigments. Are they retained uh, till the end of that uh, uh, five day uh, on tree uh, ripening stage or after uh, the harvest of the fruit? No, uh, look. Uh, Seven days after uh, harvesting. No, okay, so uh, <clears throat> so we did not measure the uh, color pigment. That work I have done on wine grapes, but uh, no, the color uh, did not change. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I'm I'm Dr. Padmaat, sir, Dean of Horticulture, YSR Horticulture University. Uh, thank you, sir. Very nice and informative lecture on this. Uh, Store, cold story performance and post harvest and also this breeding and extension aspect, sir. I have a doubt, sir. Uh, this Gloria, I have told so many positive characters of this Gloria variety of peaches, sir. Are there yes. any varieties on par with these varieties that can be grown in Indian conditions in northern area of uh, India? So, a uh, very good question. So, only uh, problem is the chilling units. So in even in northern India, uh, let's say uh, you know Punjab, Himachal, Himachal Pradesh, we may not get enough chilling. You need to ripen many varieties that uh, we have. Okay, so we have to go for a low chilling unit varieties. Now southern US, like Florida and Georgia, is warmer, and they have low chilling uh, unit varieties. Okay. And uh, we always ask them, because we cannot assess. We get like 2,000 hours of chilling uh, units, okay, uh, in New Jersey because it's so cold. So uh, versus Florida, they get 700, 800 hours. So for India, I think we need low chilling varieties. And Georgia and Florida, like, you know, we have to look for those varieties. Uh, Very right, uh, Dr. Hemant. Uh, even in Apple, we have introduced low chilling requirement varieties. And uh, now we can grow Apple up to Ambala, Kurukshetra region. Wow. So we have uh, introduced a lot of varieties from Italy. In uh, I think 1 million the plants along with the, the pollinizers we have introduced wow. in the last one decade. So that is making wow. a difference. So in uh, the peach also, we have the low chilling required varieties of peaches. In India, whatever I did mention, Sharbati or Shane Punjab or uh, Florida Prince, again, it is 800 or 900 requirement. E, okay, yes. Uh, I think uh, one thing I must say, like, you know, breeding has powers. I mean, you know, it's a, it's like, you know, it's a classical breeding, I'm saying. Like, you know, forget about this molecular breeding. That can come later. We can use the marker assisted selection. But uh, I mean, just you know, this right uh, genotype, and then this, this problem is hugely solved. Actually, <clears throat> sir, I have another question, sir. Uh, yes. You have mentioned about the internal browning and uh, breakdown and uh, browning of uh, peaches. In fact, uh, being in South India, we are not much. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 adapted to eating these. Uh, Except apple remaining fruits, we rarely eat. But in apples also, we have seen outside it looks normal, sir. But when you cut it, you see the internal browning. Browning is there any method to detect that the internally browning is there? Because once the internal browning is there, we cannot eat them. That problem we have faced in apples also, sir. Uh, it looks very healthy from outside. So will mm -hmm. it be the same problem? Same with the peaches also, uh, or is there any method to detect it? So uh, in peaches, the internal browning is mostly associated with the uh, water stress because in like, you know, summer, sometimes it's 
you know, eight, six weeks, no rain. And uh, we think that's a stress uh, that could trigger the cell death, basically. That's a, and then tissue death. Uh, the other thing is that frost injury, sometimes it's, it damaged the embryo. The, the pollination has happened, but it has damaged enough that after a while, like, you know, uh, it begins to express itself and then you, you see browning. That's we see in peaches. And then you, uh, so that's two things. I don't think we, like, you know, uh, in uh, Southern India, we have that problem. Uh, but apples, I can say, like, we have this bitter pit problem on a bitter rot or bitter pit uh, i'm not sure if you are pointing to that disorder because they call it disease but it's also disorder we don't know we are still trying to figure out what's the cause uh, of that so but yeah other than that i don't know much about the apple storage okay. or apple uh, browning thank you sir one thing more, yeah. uh, Professor Hemant, uh, is about pollination. Since you have very big farms, 1,000 acres, 5,000, 5, 500 acres, like that. So there are poll pollination services provided by the companies or uh, the farmers. They do have their own, uh, uh, the bees they are using for pollination purposes. So uh, very good question. Uh, we uh, So peaches are self-pollinated. They don't need it. But for apples, uh, we promote the you know uh, wild uh, flowers. It's it's a big program because that helps. Uh, so uh, so apples needs I think pollinator trees and pollinizers as well. So it's a male and female uh, in some ratios, and then also like this uh, pollinator bees. So that's what they are promoting now. I uh, so there are farmers that they have these services that they make honey and also you know uh, use this uh, wild uh, flowers in and around those their orchards. 500 700 acres is really difficult to manage. Only in California I have seen that they do it. They bring the bees from Oregon, Washington state. So giant trucks that will come and they they give the service for pollination in almond. It's a big uh, business. Um, and yeah, but not, not, I haven't seen it here. So thank you, Professor Heman. Thank you very much for making a very informative presentation. Thank you. From my side, we are over. There is no further question. Thank you very much. And we further look forward to have this kind of presentation again in future from your side. And you sure, sure. We can also make some presentation, some aspects for your university. That would be great. We should have discussion, yes. Because, you know, uh, as like this global uh, connect program, like, you know, in, more we reach out, more we learn. Even I learned a lot from your jo uh, Jaipur conference. A excellent research. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, any questions from faculty members or students from the participants? Madam, uh, if there are no questions, I think you can uh, ask for. Uh, oh, it's already uh, late. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for the elaborative lecture about the pictures. Uh, I'm sure all the faculty members and uh, all the participants and from other university also they are much of, very good, very much benefited by your lecture and very good photographs and uh, excellent presentation through PowerPoint, sir. 
uh, uh, has already day has already turned uh, to your side <laughs> uh, uh, so thank you sir thank you for sparing your valuable time uh, now i request yeah. uh, our dean of student affairs uh, dr salami sunita to propose the formal vote of thanks sir thank you on behalf of dr ysr horticultural university it's my privilege and pleasure to present formal vote of thanks on this 18th Global Connect series. So at the outset, I extend my deep sense of gratitude to our most respected Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. T. Janaki Ramgaru, the author, director, and the dynamic force guidance behind this Global Connect series. My heartfelt thanks to Dr. Hamant Gohil, uh, today's uh, speaker for his extensive talk and nice presentation on delayed harvest and cold storage performance of Gloria peaches with stony heart genetics. Thank you very much, sir, for the uh, nice presentation and taking us to uh, New Jersey to the world of the Gloria and uh, enlightening us with the challenges of uh, browning issues and with the clarity of thought and giving us the methods of uh, post-harvest and extension aspects and uh, throwing us a uh, light so that we can uh, do parallel kind of research here uh, following the methodology. Thank you very much, sir, for a very nice and uh, lucid, clear presentation. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank Sri Karan Narendra Agricultural University, Jobna Jaipur, uh, most respected honorable vice chancellor of the university and the staff, the MSc and PhD students for uh, gracing this uh, lecture and uh, getting benefit out of it. And thank you for your interaction and kind remarks. Uh, regarding the program. My sincere thanks to Dr. A.S. Padmavatama, Madam, Dean of Horticulture, Dr. YSR Horticultural University, for presenting the glimpses of Dr. YSR Horticultural University. And I'm thankful to Dr. S. Surya Kumari, Madam, Dean PG Studies, Dr. L. Naram Naidgaru, Director of Research, Dr. D.V. Swami, Controller of Examinations, Dr. E. Karunasri, uh, Director of Extension, and I'm thankful to the convener of this program, Dr. B. Srinivas Lugaru, Registrar and Director of Industrial Inter and International Program, Dr. YSR Horticultural University. And my sincere thanks to all the associate deans of horticultural colleges, teaching staff, and journal heads and heads of research stations, scientific fraternity for uh, uh, joining the program and getting benefit out of the program. And my sincere thanks to supporting staff uh, for the uh, kind arrangements for making the program successful. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind words. And please uh, give my regards to Dr. Janki Raman. Uh, uh, I missed him today. I was looking forward to talk to him, but... Uh, Please uh, say my regards to him. Thank you very much, sir. Sir has extended his wishes and because of his uh, uh, prior occupations, he could not. Uh, no. We are much delighted with your talk, sir. We got the clarity of thought and uh, uh, more uh, like a marketing extension activities apart from the post-harvest, how to link up the things like that. Thank you very much, sir. And... Uh, uh, this is odd hours also. You are with us. Thank you for your gracious no, uh, no consent. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Sir. Thank you. Have a good day, sir. Yes. Yes, Dr. Dr. Sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, gracing this occasion. Uh, it's really no, uh, a wonderful program today we have for the benefit of all the faculty and students. <laughs> and it's really great to see our... Um, Honorable Vice Chancellor from uh, SKNAU, Dr. Uh, uh, Ross Singh, sir, and also their faculty. 
Uh, and on behalf of our Honorable Vice Chancellor and uh, all of our staff members, we once again extend our heartfelt thanks to you, sir, for uh, sparing your valuable time at this late hours and giving a very wonderful lecture uh, on this topic. Thank you very much, sir, once again. Thank you, no sir. Problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.